Hello, nice to see you again on day four of our challenge. Today we are talking about a huge muscle in your body, which is often not taken into account when considering sciatic pain. This is the so-called iliopsoas, also known as the hip flexor or iliacus muscle. And you will be able to understand wonderfully why we are doing this exercise when you learn where it is and how it runs. It originates here on the inside of the thigh, then runs over the groin, and a part, a shorter part, goes into the ilium here, and the other goes to the lumbar spine. And this muscle is always shorter when we sit, similar in both legs, right? And many sit for a very, very long time without compensating for it. And this means that the body tends to rebuild the corresponding muscle components and the fascia, the tissue there, in a shorter way. Because the body always does what we train it to do. And sitting is also a training in this respect. Imagine, it gets shorter and shorter, more and more tense, pulling more and more, so it pulls us forward. And so we don't want to walk, we want to walk straight. What pulls us up? the gluteal muscles in the hip area, and above that, the back extensors. And because most people struggle with this increase in tension here in the front, pulling forward, there is a lot of tension in the back to compensate for it. And that is exactly the reason, in my opinion, based on experience, the main reason why the sciatic nerve is compressed, why the sacroiliac joint causes difficulties, starts to block, because everything back here just keeps getting tighter. When that is dissolved, the shortenings in front, it is automatically more relaxed in the back. And in this respect, we do, as we have already done, relax everything at the back for days and now solve the main cause at the front, and then we are well on our way to really getting it under control. Long explanation, now let's get started. Hi, day four. Let's continue day four. Yes, what are we doing today? Now we're talking about the hip flexor. Hip flexors for both sides, let's continue. Attention, please get down into the crawling position. And now we will do the following. First, let the back sag and bring it up, especially the lower back. Try to feel and sense the lower back as much as possible. So first of all, this movement, and then stay up, stay up, a little back with the knees. And now we let the groins lead us and hang down. Groin forward, back hangs. And the groins want to go down to the floor. The groins want to reach the floor. And since we now want to stretch the right side preferentially, we bring the left knee out and place the left foot on the inside of the right knee. And now you notice, even at home, Tabitha also notices, there is more tension on the right groin. Yes, totally. And that pulling sensation is good because now the hip flexor, which I explained earlier, will be nicely stretched out. And that is very good because in our experience, it is responsible for the vast majority of lower back pain. Just like all the buttock pains, it will be explained. The cause is in the front, the reaction is in the back. By the way, if supporting yourself with your arms is too strenuous, if you can't manage it, if the strength isn't there, if the shoulder stability isn't there, then simply lie down on a couch with your torso, with your chest, and only place the forearms on and let yourself hang down. That is much, much more relaxed, and then related to the hip flexor, exactly the same. So we now start bringing in strength. So the right knee is now pressing against the ground. Be careful that the right hip does not move. It must stay exactly where it is. The right knee presses against the ground. Relax again. And come down a bit further with the right inguinal region. And again, press the right knee against the ground. 
relax and come further down. And again, pressing against the ground, pressing against the ground, pressing against the ground, relax, come further down. Breathe beautifully. And now a few times faster. Press, release, go further down. Press, release, go further down. Just don't do it too intensely. Stay exactly like this so that it is just bearable. Press, release, go further down. Press, release, go further down. And slowly come up again. And attention, do this right away. And you at home as well. Move your buttocks as far back and down as possible. To balance that out a bit. That feels good. Take a deep breath. And then come back up. And do the same on the left side. If it was too strenuous for the arms, then go directly to a couch or armchair so that you can do it with assistance. Make another round and come down with the groin, with both groins first. And extend the right knee out. The right foot to the inside of the left knee and keep hanging down beautifully. And breathe while doing so. While you hang down, keep breathing at the same time. It's really good that you say it. I forget it all the time. I always hold my breath. Holding your breath means you are too tense. That's not great. Good that Tabita just said that. When you notice you have to hold your breath and there is no flow left, then you are usually too much in the intensity. You have to reduce a little and not let it sag quite so deeply. Okay. So gradually come back down. You can even place your left foot as a small amplifier. Do that and you will notice now it pulls a little more. Actually, yes. Because in addition to the hip flexor, another hip flexing muscle also comes into the stretch, which further enhances the overall positive effect. Breathe beautifully. Sink in, go deeper. And now we press with the knee against the ground. Now the strength training is coming back. The knee presses against the ground. Presses against the ground. Press firmly, try to overcome the resistance. And a little tighter. And relax. And continue going downwards. And again. The knee presses against the ground. Press firmly, try to overcome the resistance. And a little tighter. And relax. And further down. It is possible that you also feel a stretch on the right side, more on the inside. Take this stretch as a positive side effect. And again, the left knee presses against the ground. Relax again. And you go even deeper. Place the inguinal ligament a bit on the inside, and the navel always wants to stay towards the top. So the hyperextension does not occur in the lower spine, but in the hip. And even a few times faster, we press lightly and further. And again, press gently and continue. Left knee hurts, keep loose, further. Left knee hurts, keep loose, further. And then we slowly go out. Emphasize on slow. Move slowly and consciously. And once again, briefly go into the opposite movement. 
Breathe again. And out again. And if you like, write down what you felt today, how you have progressed, how your condition has improved. And tomorrow we will focus on the sacroiliac joint and sciatica hero. And if you don't have it yet, please take a look today, gather some balls, preferably firm balls, maybe from dog toys that are not too soft, that do not compress so easily. The coconut is another option, which you halve and then practically stand on the cut side. That's quite accurate. They also come in various shapes. Something that has this shape, you should have at hand tomorrow so that you can participate well. Because you will be amazed. And maybe even excited for these new challenges. If not already done, up there you can subscribe and down here you will find another video. So until tomorrow and stay tuned.